the big cliche is that engineers are good at designing things, but they're not good at understanding how people think and, and use technology. So human factors is there to kind of, there's another term for human factors. Sometimes it's called engineering psychology. So you can think about it that way. How do you engineer a product, a device, an airplane cockpit, a, a self-driving car, so that it fits best with human capabilities. And most often we're talking about human cognitive capabilities. So how people pay attention to things, remember things, make decisions, make judgments. And the, the way that I describe it is just like you said, that psychology is this kind of amorphous thing where you've got all these different fields inside it. I think human factors is kind of the same way, mm -hmm. except that everyone's heard of psychology. Very few people have heard of human factors or human factors psychology. But once you kind of take a step through the door and into, I have this analogy that, that I use when I um, speak to people, students about this. It's like you're going into an office building and that whole office building is human factors psychology. And there's different floors in that building and different doors down different corridors. That's what it's like. Once you get into the human factors building, oh, now there's human factors as it relates to aviation and now as it relates to video games and um, surface transportation, which is cars and trains and th that kind of stuff. There's human computer interaction. How do you design phones and websites? So it's just there's so many different right. sub sub areas in there. Because and this is kind of like like the the way that a the way that someone really knows their way around a computer or or like you know Bill Gates or some computer <laughs> programmer might navigate their way around DOS or something like that is and that's very efficient for them or some mm -hmm. hacker or something like that. You build a a a, a computer which to an expert might seem counterintuitive, but is, is for, for to create an, a simple um, user interface. Exactly. You need to create the, you need to think about these human factors. If you think like, well, mask would actually work, help transmit a virus, but are people going to use them? People might, it might make sense for money people to save money in some certain way, but behavioral economics actually shows people might save in a different way. Or, or this, uh, I promise this is the last example. <laughs> there's, there's, uh, These are good I, examples. I, I'm, I'm thinking of of when they first made made the internet the interstate system and they're like well what if we get bombed or something and you need to get from point a to point b as fast as you possibly can straight line it and let's just make these straight interstates and then what do you know the uh, driving in on a straight road uh, these these lines going by just hypnotize people until they fall asleep and drive off the road who knew that you actually need to put curves in the road? A robot wouldn't do this. You wouldn't build a robot track this way. But when you're thinking about human factors, these are the things that you need to consider. Exactly. And, you know, there's things, human factors considers technology broadly. So it can be something high tech, computer, that kind of thing. But it can also be things like a door handle. Right. So how many times have you gone up to a door that's really a push door? Yeah. And, you know, you've pulled on the handle because it's been set up by someone to give you cues that or it, it, they're either ambiguous cues or they've put the kind of thing that you would grab onto and pull rather than just put like a metal plate that's flat that you can't grab onto that you have to push. Yeah. Right? That's that's human factors.